there's got to be a better way of drilling out washers than this. Hello viewers, Alan here, welcome back to the workshop. Yeah, I'm not real keen on uh, using the uh, holding the washer in the vice grip pliers approach. I reckon it's got whiskers on it. It just doesn't work for thin washers or small washers and it scars the outside of the washers. It's got to be a better way. So in this video I want to work my way through a couple of different prototypes to see if I can come up with a, a jig for holding it and uh, making it uh, easier and safer and for a better result. So let's get straight into it. So when I've wanted to open a hole in a washer up in the past I've used several methods but this one is generally the fastest but there are some big disadvantages which we'll come to but anyway so grab hold of the washer with a vice grip pliers stick it over a block or something and get into it with a step drill all right so that got us through to, to 16 but needed to have a consenting block of wood to support the end of the drill but also to stop it biting in too quickly but when we inspect the um, the washer we see that the um, force required to, to hold it, I don't know how well you can see that, has left um, teeth marks in the side of the washer. It's tolerable and certainly it's a way to get the job done and if that's your only option well you get the job done. But I wanted to see if I could find a better way of holding it which didn't leave those marks and didn't need the special block of wood. So got a couple of ideas first thing is to do a couple of tests to uh, see whether the idea for clamping I've got in mind works. Okay so I thought I'd better start by getting some sort of a feel for how much clamping pressure is actually needed for this idea to work. So this is just a quick mock up with some scraps to test the idea of uh, clamping the two sides of a washer and seeing if it can resist uh, the drilling force. So this is quite a hefty test. I'm going to um, 12 millimeters to 14 so I think if it can handle that we can we can think it's got pretty good grip but I'm a bit skeptical we'll see yeah you yeah, can't handle that I can try tightening it up a little bit I didn't deliberately didn't get to carried away but uh, I think if I do it any tighter than this, I'll be distorting the washers, which is what I need you to discover. Because I think I'm going to need think I'm going to need thicker washers. Yeah, that's not going to work. All right, well that was a good test. So these need to be thicker so I can put more pressure on the washer. So I'll bring you back when I've got that. Okay, so we're going to go from uh, 23 millimeter washers, which we use first up, to 5 millimeter washers, so twice as thick. And because this material here is only a, oh, I don't know, millimeter or so, I'll put a, a really thick washer, same thickness, on the underside, so that the uh, it doesn't just pull the tube, distort the tube. So let's see how that works out. A bit fiddly to get this in. Okay, so we can try again now. I've got um, holes that allow these socket heads screws to get through with their thick washer. <laughs> assemble it in the right sequence anyway. Let's take the burr off the back of these holes. The useful little tool this, it will deburr the back of the hole. Oops, as perhaps you can see. It's good when you a good tool for when you can't get in the bank yourself. Or can't get in the bank directly. Right. 
So let's try again. So thick washer. <laughs> Fingers and thumbs. So thick washer through there, through there. Right. Now we can get that guy on and a nut. Right. Same on the other side. Other end, whatever. Right. Get you on. And a nut. Sometimes wonder whether trying to do a, a, a quick and dirty proof of concept she takes longer than doing the job properly. But anyway, that's the way it goes. So we're ready to try again. I want to hold the back up to make sure there's pressure down on the front. We'll see if that puts enough pressure on to get the job done. Or whether the whole concept is flawed. Alright, off we go. Let's see what happens. so far right so that was just clearing it out to 14 so that just cleared it out to 12 so I'll do 14 and then 16 we'll see how that goes <clears throat> uh, 14 coming up The drill to have a bit more power. Right, well, we found the limit there, didn't we? and do it a bit tighter see how that goes I think um, if I did it up tighter it will distort this tube so this, in some respects isn't the most useful um, test I really should have this bolted up to something more substantial and we'll see how we go So we're going at uh, 16 millimeters at the moment, which is pretty extreme. It. I think that's an extreme test. So, um, and also, um, if I take this further, the the clamping piece here will be scalloped a little bit, a little bit here, so it will actually reach further around, and that will give it more leverage to hold with. So I'm 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 encouraged. I think this this will be work just fine as long as the base piece here is at least as thick as that and that's the problem at the moment so let's pull it apart and inspect I'll put that allen key over there Right, well that's the washer with its 16mm uh, hole, so that all worked fine. And of course the um, step drill um, chamfered it from the, for the next size up. But anyway, I regard that as an extreme test. So I think this clamping arrangement uh, 
can work but I can see that the um, there's been a bit of pull up here because this material is so much thinner so all in all I'm quite encouraged and I'll move on to a um, more of the design that I had in mind so I've decided to use a scrap of a 40 millimeter square tube uh, I don't suppose you can see from there but it um, has a 4 millimeter wall thickness which should be ample for this and even though it's not important that the ends are particularly square we'll start off by cleaning the ends up anyway himself something that's easy to work with and get hold of I'll just select the right speed here about a thousand rpm that's probably good enough That, I think, is uh, the end of the uh, the seam from when the thing was manufactured. And the metal was just a bit harder there because of the heat that was used for the weld. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So that's one end cleaned up. We'll flip it over and do the other end. Before um, uh, machining the other end, I thought I'd just... This is uh, as cut off the bandsaw. I thought I'd just check it with a square. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, well, I'm not going to improve on that a whole heap, so... And it's pretty square the other way, too. I'm surprised. There you go. Uh, there's no point running that into the milling machine because it's already square enough. So we move on. So with the design I have in mind, I'm going to need a couple of T-nuts. So we'll knock a couple of those up now. And we'll start off by doing a very light skim across the top of this material. Should be able to get most of my T-nuts that I want out of this. So off we go. Yeah, don't care about that piece. All right. Uh, yeah, that'll be fine. So now I've got to clean this end up, change tools, and bring you back when I've done that. Okay, so I've decided to use the um, the tool that's in there for cutting the rebates and the and sides of the T nuts, and uh, I've set the depth already at uh, four millimeters down or three point nine down from the top that face that we've just done. And I've got to go in uh, 7.5 millimetres. So I've got to touch off and then go in another two and in the final one and a half And now we've got to do the same on the other side. I want the um, top of this T-nut to finish up 10 wide. doesn't have to be that accurate, but 10's the target. So it's a, a clean up and a check measure. I didn't need this bit on the end, but it seemed just as easy to. Uh, no, time is not money for me. Ha! <laughs> 
<laughs> unless it's doing a job I don't like, like washing the car, then it's money. I'll pay someone else to do that. I'm lazy for jobs I don't like doing. That sounded like some sulfur crusty cockatoos have moved into the neighbourhood. If that's the case, I'm not happy about that. Destructive buggers they are. Big white things with strong beaks. <laughs> they rip into anything. Roofing insulation, you name it. Yeah, a real curse. And they, they kill trees. I know they're part of the wildlife and they're entitled to their space in the ecosystem, but geez, they do some damage. They get into really large flocks. I've got to, I'm going to clean this end up yet anyway. All right, so get rid of some chips and see what size we finished up with. What I want is something that will slide in a 10 mil slot. Uh, depends where I hold the... Let's do it properly. But it's given me 99.6 nine, oh, <laughs> closest, closest damn it to 10 anyway for what I'm trying to do, that'll be fine. So, um, next thing is to uh, get a, a centre line on the this piece and get some holes in uh, for the rest of the what these things have got to do. There's enough material here for two T-nuts and um, I've got to drill and tap uh, two threaded hole, for two threaded holes in each of them. So we'll get started with the, the first hole. Now, I'm doing different size holes. Okay, so one hole is going to be 3 8 uh, BSW, um, well, 3 8 16, so I want a 7.9 millimeter hole. It's tapping size for that. I'm going to slow this guy down. So that's finished uh, drilling and tapping my holes. All we're going to do now is cut this in half and cut the end off and clean it up and be done. I have a pair of uh, tea nuts. And I have to confess to a small error when I was making these guys. Um, I used this uh, insert uh, cutter and I was forgetting that the, um, the corners of the inserts have got a radius on them. So um, they left a... Uh, um, radius in the bottom of the groove which I didn't really want so I've just touched them up with a, an end mill and um, hopefully I've still got the right size now we better just check that okay so I finished making these T-nuts and cleaned them up and I was shooting for a width across there of just under 10 so there would be a sliding fit in a 10 mil slot uh, well it's probably a bit closer to 10 than I was hoping for but um, if I've got to, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, fettle the slot a little bit, well, so be it. Anyway, they, uh, they turned out alright. This is just some bit of scrap. I didn't bother cleaning the back of it up. Um, and uh, that was a witness from a hole that was in a bit of scrap. Well, so what? Just get on with it. Right. Okay, so I want to be able to mount these uh, two discs in a collet block to uh, do an operation on them. So I'm going to knock up a, an arbor to uh, mount them on, which I can then put in the collet block. Just, just needs to be um, turned down to a quarter inch shank and then a bit of thread and they'll get the job done. Alright, so we've got to get this down from 15.17 uh, to 6.35 for a quarter.
and see how that's looking. And I could press it on, but don't want to be, don't want it to be that tight. Get a couple of strokes with the file. That's pretty close to the fit I'm looking for. These, um, I just remember too, the, hole, the holes in these things weren't reamed, they were just drilled. It's a bit tight right up close to the... Let's see if we can clean it up a little bit just there. There we go. That's what we want. Yeah, that's good. So let's put a bit of thread on the end here now. Okay, so give me a chance to use the big boy tail stock holder. Um, die holder, I should say. A little bit of uh, goo on the yeah. And now I can't see how far it's gonna take the thread. We're gonna just a touch further. Should we do that by hand I guess? Put it into neutral. Just give it a good old turn. Yep. Now, because of the taper, the thread leading that the die leaves, so I probably haven't gone quite far enough. No, I need to go a little bit further, I think. Alright, so we just turn this die around. And so there's a, a lead on, on the on one side and it's square on the other. Alright, so we'll just bring this back. Alright. One advantage of a large diameter chuck, you get older, you get quite a bit of leverage when you start reefing it around. Anyway, I think that's good to go. I don't think we need to do anything more than that. It's probably only get used once, so there's no point getting carried away. These are nice and a firm fit on there. I might even just chamfer that. Oh, that's got a bit of a chamfer in the hole there on that side. Yeah, that's better. Right. We need now is a nut. We got it. There we go. It won't come loose, will it? Right, when well, I've got those buggers like that, I'll just do a skim on the uh, out, outer face there. Oh, 
going to be good enough. What I'm trying to do, it could, could go slightly more, but there's no point. So we'll, we'll go with that. Okay, that's ready to go in the collet block now. Now, the reason I wanted to mount these um, discs onto an arbor is um, I want to um, cut some scallops uh, in them so that um, when they go to clamp on the disc um, they can get a better engagement. That's my thinking anyway. So I want to do three different sized scallops, small, medium and large. So over to the milling machine for that. Okay, so I'm using the centering indicator to um, position the discs directly under the centre line of the mill spindle. Okay, let's see. You can see I've already got that lined up pretty well. This uh, thing makes things, this sort of operation, really simple, quick and simple. So to get my three scallops, I'm going to use um, three different sized um, end mills and um, position the centre line of the end mill on the uh, edge of the disc here, on, on the radius distance from the centre of it, and then plunge down. And that should give me um, half the a scallop equal to half the uh, size of the of the cutter. Um, and I've got a, a and I have a vice stop here, so I can then rotate the uh, six-sided collet block um, in thirds to position the three around the, equally around the, the edge, and do them all on that. Um, on the well, anyway, that's my plan. We'll see how it works. Yeah, that looks all right. Well, this is uh, still largely experimental, so who knows whether I'll uh, I'm getting this right or wrong. All right, well, that's one done. All right, so I'll swap this out. Okay, so I've swapped round to do the, uh, the, the smallest of the uh, scallops. I've decided to use a slot drill as well. Have a proper look at that. Well, not sure exactly what was going on there, but uh, I checked the end of the cutter and it was fine. So I finished it off by coming in from the face, and that seemed to work pretty well. So perhaps that's how I'll do the last one. Um, I guess I was trying not to do it like that in case it generated turning force and to spin the thing around but anyway that seemed to work so I guess that's the way I'll do the third one. So we'll turn it around and do the last one. So I think I'll do the last one um, uh, lightening the load on the cutter because I'm a bit worried about I'm going to use this guy it developing enough torque to spin the discs around and I'm not quite sure yet what to do to avoid that, but um, 
Anyway, I'll start by uh, using the smaller cutter. And I'm going to go in um, radially instead of um, vertically and uh, I'll do it half the depth at a time, maximise my chance of avoiding problems. Of course it just occurred to me, since that one went really well, I'll call that one <laughs> the right size for this cutter and then uh, go back to this other one and open that out to the large one. Makes more sense doesn't it? And I'll finish up hopefully with three uh, good looking scallops. Okay well we'll give this a go with a 16mm two flute cutter, somewhat gingerly. I've opened that out a little bit so it's not taking such a big bite. We'll see how that goes. Mm, it seems to be alright if I take it slow. And three. Okay. Three scallops. Okay, so time to start working on the base. And uh, first thing is uh, a 17 millimeter hole smack in the guts. That's my 17 mil. So, um, using the boring head here, because what I want to do is create a counter bore on the top of that hole, 25.4 um, diameter and uh, about a millimeter deep. The safety cuts just tripped. See the pin there. Oh, sorry the, the pin on the safety clutch was just out of shot. Sorry, but it just popped up when we hit the uh, So when this pin hit the block that I set on the back, the stop block, that caused that safety clutch pin to pop up and the uh, the out feed stopped. So that's created a, a pocket, a shallow little pocket for the uh, support plate to um, sit in. So we'll have uh, 
two, maybe three of these with a different size hole in the middle for the uh, target washer to sit on. That's just to locate it. So that's that part of the job done. I'll have a bit more of a clean up around here probably, but anyway, that bit, the boring bit's done. <laughs> the boring bit, yeah. Okay, so now I want to uh, cut out the uh, <laughs> the slots for the, the tea nuts. Battery in the my microphone decided it had done enough work for the day at this point, so I lost sound with this bit of uh, video. But you can see that I had cut the two main slots for the T nuts. I used an 8mm end mill and did a stripe down the middle of each of the slots, and then came back on each side for a 1mm clean up to take it out to size. And what you can see at the moment is me using a 4mm end mill to start cleaning out the ends of the, the slots. Okay, so I've got this uh, cleaned up now, and the uh, tea nuts uh, do um, slide in there, fit quite nicely, that, that's all good. But um, I realised there's a, a significant design error. To explain, if we go back to the uh, earlier prototype, the idea was to have um, uh, uh, to, to clamp a washer down and have pieces coming in to do that and I had um, the back of the piece is supported by uh, a washer and so I evolved the design to think well if I have three scallops then I've got those, those things and um, and then I thought well why don't I make the uh, the back of the, the thing adjustable uh, so I can allow for different thickness washers and whatever so I did all of that <laughs> but what I failed to uh, recognise was that when this goes on there, um, and I put my screw in. Come on, get in there. That's all fine and dandy, but there isn't actually anything holding the back of this thing up. So when I try and do the screw up, it just pushes the back down in the slot. I hope you can see that. So I was wondering whether I needed to throw the whole thing out because it's such a significant design here. And I thought, well, I've come this far with it, what else can I do? Basically, the, the back of the nuts needs to be, back of the, the T nuts need to be supported. But um, I can't just like weld a plate or something under there because I won't be able to get the things in. So whatever the support is, it has to be removable so I can get the T-nuts in. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, drill here and put a, a bar through uh, underneath. So I can put the nuts in and then slide the bar in and then uh, we'll be back to where we should be. So <laughs> that's the next step. Drill and fit uh, a support bar under each end here. Okay, so we're all set to uh, drill my holes. Now, because I want them to be quite uh, accurately placed, I'm going to drill um, from each side, not drill all the way through, because I don't want the drill wandering off. Especially as I can see that on the uh, the other side of this tube, there's a the welded seam, and um, I don't want the drill to hit that from the inside and wander off. So here we go. Six. Oops, now I'm going to use a, a letter C drill and that will create a hole which will be quite tight for my the bolt that I'm going to use. And I may have to open it out, but we'll see. I'm looking for a pretty tight fit, so let's start tight and loosen it up if we have to. Nice. That's no bloody good at all, is it? So 
So I can um, flip this over and do the same on the other side and then move up the other end and flip again. Alright, let's have it out and see what we've got. Okay, so I've made and installed um, supports for the back end of the T-nut. I was just going to have quarter inch bolts, but I managed to drill the holes very accurately in exactly the wrong place. I used, uh, for my dimension, I used a diameter when I should have used a radius. Anyway, I solved the problem by making up a bush that was the right size. So now these uh, 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 are very well supported at the back end. So we go back to the original idea. I don't, still don't know whether this works. I did actually scribe, I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but I did actually scribe a centre line here and here, centre marks, so when I put a, a washer on, uh, I'd be able to see where it was, but then uh, subsequently I did the counter bore, so it wasn't such a, a big thing. Anyway, so I think it's time to uh, do a full assembly and, uh, and a test. So now, of course, with these screws at the back, I can adjust for the thickness of the washer. And um, now, because it's properly supported underneath the back, I can do these out really tight. Uh, tightly enough, tight enough, hopefully, that there's no way that bloody washer is going to turn. Now I didn't check when I set that particular thing up whether I had enough room for a 16mm um, what do you call the step drill, but let's have a quick look. So as that stands at the moment, I don't reckon I'd get a 16 in there. Well we can give it a go with a 14 anyway, and then uh, slide them out a bit if we have to. So I think from a test I'm going to go over to the drill press rather than go handheld to begin with because uh, I can put this in the, the drill, uh, drill vise. Okay, so let's go over to the drill press and see how it works. Okay, well let's see how we go. Much easier than that. All right, well, I say that's pretty darn good. Happy with that. So I thought I might as well have a go to a smaller washer as well. No dramas there. So I think it's actually made a pretty good job out of it. It's hard to hold this so you can see it. But anyway, a pretty neat job out of it. And uh, yeah, I think this would work equally well for small and really thin washers too. Which is, uh, and really thin washers you can't grab hold of with the. Uh, uh, vice grip pliers. Anyway, I think that's it. Okay, well that seemed to work out alright, and this little jig certainly did the business. One thing, a uh, little detail I didn't mention, I selected uh, 3 8 um, 16 for the jack screw at the back and quarter 20 for the uh, holding down screw because they both have the same side hex hole, so you can operate it with one Allen key. Just a little detail. But anyway, I'm uh, quite pleased with the way this one's worked and I think it's going to hang around and be used. But I've got another idea for a different way of doing it, a different way of solving the problem. And uh, I might have a go at another prototype. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. 
and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.